at 16 months old, you know, you know something's different about your baby, right? They're not sitting up, they're not rolling over. The day of diagnosis was a bad day because I was holding on to hope that it would not be a genetic disorder, that it would just be something minor that we could fix with some medicine or a change in diet. I had done research and I knew, you know, that maybe it wasn't a death sentence, but it was, it wasn't going to get better. My heart sunk. Is the, the worst news that I've ever heard. When seizures started hitting hard is really when we saw regression and then you saw he was losing his walking. The regression mainly came with the walking, running, climbing stairs, things that we could initially do fairly well that we can't now. He lost his ability with his hands to not be able to, you know, play with the mouse or play with toys or even just do the finger grass, things like that. Um, you know, regression has taken us down a hard road. If you give up on that and think, okay, this is regression, they need to go in a wheelchair, and you stop moving and stop working, then they're not gonna make progress. If they can move and do things, swim, get in the water, enjoy their family, go on outings with their family, are able to keep up, it's gonna improve their quality of life. It's the little things that we get excited about that most parents don't pay attention to. You know, it's the walking or the climbing the stairs or the standing up or crawling for a lot of parents. When we ask him a question when we're reading him a book and he looks at us and has that interaction and those are the moments that I know he's connected with us. He likes to put his forehead sort of against your forehead and then move his head around a little bit. You know, it's very communicative and uh, very meaningful. This is our, like, doctorate, and it sounds so silly, but he worked for that. These things didn't come naturally to him. MECP2 has also been connected to depression, to anxiety, to obsessive-compulsive features, and even to autonomic dysfunction. So understanding all of these features within a very well-defined, homogeneous, single-gene disorder will actually have broader significance for all of these other conditions. We're really at an exciting time for Rett syndrome and MACP2 duplication disorder. We know the cause, we have great animal models, we're breaking down the mechanisms, we understand exactly what these proteins are affecting, and we also know there is potential of reversibility. Any of the children that are born after us that are diagnosed with a MECP2 duplication, they can look to us and see that, you know, there is hope and maybe some of the things that we do and the, the studies that we participate in will provide some answers for them and maybe even treatments for them. I always remain hopeful and keep pushing until, you know, that's it. But I always remain hopeful. I don't, I don't, I don't give up hope. <laughs>